in this section we're going to talk about limits and with limits you have to be very careful when you're talking about it if you read this you'll see I'm telling you that a function may or may not have a limit as X approaches some number C and you cannot rely on simply just plugging the number into the function to determine if a limit does or does not exist and we'll see that later on you can read the rest of that paragraph but let's start out with limit notation and explain some terminology when you see something like this it actually tells you what you're doing is is you're going to find the limit of some function f of x as x gets closer and closer and closer to c so x is not going to equal c but it's going to get infinitely close to c so in other words x is just going to get as close to c as you would like for it to be but it's not necessarily going to equal c and so that's what it means now if this if this limit exists it'll actually equal some number and we'll call that number l but for the limit all right, so for example, if you saw a notation like this, then the function is x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. And what you're doing is you're going to try to find the limit of this function as x approaches negative 2. So it means that we will observe this function and we will see where this function is headed as x gets closer and closer to negative 2. If it appears that f of x is getting closer and closer to some number L, we can estimate that the limit equals L, and we'll see that in an example. Now, when I do this next uh, series of examples, it's not really a proof that the limit exists or doesn't exist, but it's just sort of to show you what happens or how we evaluate limits, what's happening to the limit as X gets closer and closer and closer to a particular number. Now, you might notice here that you can't plug negative 2 in and get a real number. If you just plug negative 2 in, you would get 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. And that's what we call an indeterminate form. So that just means from an indeterminate form, you can't determine the limit. So let's, let's do a little table here for x and y values and see what happens as x gets closer and closer to negative 2 for this function. Okay, so if we plug negative 2.1 into this function and evaluate it, you can grab a calculator to do this, you'll get negative 4.1. Well, let's get a little closer to negative 2. Let's, let's try negative 2.01. Well, if we plug negative 2.01 in, we get negative 4.01. Well, let's get a little closer, negative 2.001. That's real close to negative 2. Well, if we plug that in, we get negative 4.001. So it appears that I approach, as I approach negative 2 from the left of negative 2, it appears that this limit is getting closer and closer to negative 4. Well, let's approach negative 2 from the other side. If I plug in negative 1.9 into the function, I get negative 3.9. If I plug negative 1.99 into the function, I get negative 3.99. If I plug negative 1.99 9, I get negative 3.999 for the y value. Well, based on what's happening as we approach from the right and what's happening as we approach from the left, it kind of looks like this function is headed to negative 4 as x approaches negative 2. The problem, though, is that the function is not defined at negative 2, so we can't say that the function equals negative 4 when x is negative 2. But we can say that the limit of this function as x approaches negative 2 is negative 4. Now, I said that as an estimate because actually there's a way to prove that that we'll see later. Here's another example. Let's say we want to evaluate this function and we want to, we want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 16. Well, if you plug 16 into this function, you'll get 0 on top, and you'll get square root of 16 minus 4, which is 0 on bottom. And 0 over 0 is undefined. It's an indeterminate form. Well, then let's try it. Let's try it another way. Let's approach 16 from the left and approach 16 from the right, and let's see if we can estimate where the y values are headed. 
Well, again, grab your calculator, plug 15.9 in, so do 15.9 minus 16 over the square root of 15.9 minus 4, and see what you get. I got 7.987. And then I tried it with 15.99. When I plugged that into the function, I got 7.999. And when I plug 15.999 in, I got 7.9999. So it looks like this function is getting closer and closer to 8. Let's try it from the other side. If I plug 16.1 in, I got 8.012. If I plug 16.01 in, I got 8.001. If I plug 16. Point, sorry, that should say 001. 001 in, I got 8.0001. So it appears that no matter which side I approach 16 from, the function is getting closer and closer to 8, even though the function is not defined at 16. So based on that, I'm going to estimate that this limit equals 8 as x approaches 16. So let's take a look at something a little bit different now. Now this function, I want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 3. Okay, well again, you can't plug 3 in because you'd have 5 over 0, which is undefined. But if you plug 2.9 in, that's a number close to 3 on the left. 2.9, if you put 5 over 2.9 minus 3, you're going to get negative 50. If you put 2.99 in, you're going to get 5 over 2.99 minus 3. That's going to give you negative 500. And then if you do 2.999 in, plug it into this function, you're going to get negative 5,000. Well, from this side, it appears that if I approach 3 from this side, the function just keeps decreasing without any bounds. So if I plug 2.9999999999, it would probably be a really, really small negative number, like negative a million or something like that. And if we approach from the other side, if we plug 3.1 in, we get positive 50. If you plug 3.01 in, you get positive 500. You plug 3.001 in, you get positive 5,000. Well, then this seems to be increasing without bound as we get closer to 3 from this side. Well, obviously, as you approach 3 from either side, it doesn't look like you're, you're, that the values are agreeing on anything. So, actually, as you approach from the left, you're getting a very, very small negative number. And as you approach from the right, you're getting a very, very large positive number. So, those do not agree. So I'm going to just say the limit does not exist because for a limit to exist, um, it has to approach a real number. And these are actually approaching negative infinity from the left and positive infinity from the right. Now, let's look at one more. For this one, you have the absolute value of x plus 5 over x plus 5, and I want to investigate the limit of that function as x approaches negative 5. Well, again, I can't just plug negative 5 in because I'll get 0 over 0. So let's pick numbers close to negative 5. Now, what's interesting about this function is if you plug negative 5.1 in, you get the absolute value of negative 5.1 plus 5 over negative 5.1 plus 5. Well, if you evaluate that, that's actually negative 1. Well, what's even more interesting, if you do the same thing at negative 5.01 or negative 5.001, you're still going to get negative 1. So it appears that as I approach negative 5 from the left, the value is just going to stay negative 1. And of course, I can't plug negative 5 in, but I can plug in any number close to negative 5. Now, if I approach negative 5 from the right, if I plug negative 4.9 in, the absolute value of negative 4.9 plus 5 over negative 4.9 plus 5 is actually positive 1. And then... What's even more remarkable is if I plug in negative 4.99 or negative 4.999, I still get positive 1. So again, as I approach negative 5 from the left, the functions stay in at negative 1. As I approach negative 5 from the right, the functions stay in at positive 1. Well, since, since I can't say that the function is approaching a single number because from one side it's approaching one number, from the other side it's approaching another number, I have to say that the limit does not exist because it approaches different values from the left and from the right. We can also evaluate limits if you look at the graph, but again this doesn't really prove anything. If you were to graph this function, and if you look at this function, 
it's it's obviously undefined at one because if you plug one in you get zero over zero but if you move along the x-axis notice the y value gets closer and closer to two and if you move along the x-axis from the other side notice the y value gets closer and closer to two so this function i would say i would estimate that the limit equals two because as I get close to 1 from either side, the y value gets closer and closer to 2. This function here, as we approach 1 for this function, notice as we approach 1 from the left, notice that the function stays down here at negative 1. But if I approach 1 from the right, the function stays up here at positive 1. So this function the limit does not exist because I'm getting two different limits as I approach from different sides. And then this function as I approach 1, here's, here's 1 right here, so as I approach 1 from this side notice that this function is decreasing without bound, and then if I approach 1 from this side the function is increasing without bound, so again I would say the limit does not exist. See the limit only exists if you approach you're approaching the same number like I am here. I'm approaching 2. As I approach from both sides, I'm actually approaching the same number, and that number is 2. So that means the limit exists. Okay. Here's another example. Uh, this is similar to this first one, but it's a little bit different. This one says uh, the function equals x, which would just be this line, y equal x, if x is not equal to 1, and it equals 0 if x equals 1. Well, <coughs> here, as you approach 1, here's 1, right, on the x-axis. But as I approach 1 on the x-axis, notice the y values get closer and closer to 1 on the y-axis. And if I approach from the other side, the y values get closer and closer to 1. So I would actually say the limit of this function as x approaches 1 is 1. Okay, even though the function is defined to be a different value at 1. So that's interesting because um, in this case, the function is actually defined to be something else. It's actually 0 at 1, but the limit as x approaches 1 is actually 1 and not 0. So you can have limits where the function is undefined at a number, or you can have limits where the function is defined at a number, but it can be something totally different than the function is defined. And so that's basically your, your introduction to limits. In the next section, I'll, I'll give you the definition of limits and then show you how to find some limits algebraically.